Hey, hey you blink, I'll cut your eyelids off. Don't you Let's blink. I got you. Let's go. And happy belated New Year, Steel Nation. Welcome to another edition here of the Mad Steel Podcast. As it is week 17, the finale of the regular season. Get ready to get underway just any moment right now. Uh, we got a lot of games going on late afternoon with playoff potentials. Uh, but we do got an early one today with the Ravens. Ho- I mean, uh, taking on the Bengals. And that game will be in Cincinnati. Then later on, too, some other games that will be happening on later on today. We'll be seeing the Colts take on the Jaguars right now. Colts member due to, the Steel, due to losing to the Steelers last week. They are temporarily out of the playoff picture. And for the Colts to get into the playoffs in the AFC, uh, they could still win their division simply by having a Titans loss plus a Colts win. But that does not happen. The Colts could still gain a wild card spot by winning plus losses by either the Ravens, the Ravens, Dolphins, or Browns. And uh, right now, for the Steelers to keep the Browns out of the playoffs, they would have to beat the Browns. Colts would have to win. That'd be one way. And you, know, and you still got other teams like falling around too. Remember the Titans; they still got ramp up their division. They win. They're the AFC South champs. If the Dolphins win, they get in the playoff with either a win or losses by either the Ravens because they own the conference tiebreaker over the Ravens or the Browns, same thing, go the conference record or a Colts loss, same situation, conference record. Dolphins could also get in with tie plus ties by either the Ravens, Colts, or Browns or a tie plus a Titans loss. Ravens right now playing simple as their game is going on uh, any moment right now. It's a simple win, and they're in. If that does not happen, they can get in with a tie plus losses by either the Dolphins or the Titans. And then they can also get in with tie plus ties by either the Colts or Browns. That's where we stand off in the AFC playoff picture coming up right here today. As we look at it right now, uh, got, I'm going to go over my best case scenarios in just a moment here. But for right now, uh, so much has been uh, speculated and highlighted about the rematch of Mason Rudolph versus Miles Garrett from that horrific incident that happened well over a year ago back in Cleveland on a Thursday night game, which happened on Fox right there. Uh, you remember in that game, not only did Ma- uh, Mason Rudolph get sacked four times, he only had one touchdown, four picks in that game, had a real nasty day at the office uh, that day going on. A game he definitely would surely like to forget, as well as the ending right there. Uh, when Miles Garrett swung the helmet at Rudolph's head, uh, he had to be suspended for the rest of the season. And right there, I mean, Mason Rudolph has been trying to have a lot to prove since then, as far as his future, as a lot of people will point out right there. If you guys want to follow me on social media, you can definitely do so. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Praj Ritchie. For the Metal Steel Podcast on Twitter, it is simply at Metal Steel Nation on Instagram and at Metal Steel CGR on Twitter. I uh, got a lot of fun stuff to get into right now as we look into this right now. Steelers right now, uh, finally, after the last two previous years, thankfully, they're in the playoffs. They're in no situation where they have to win and get some help. That's simply because... They won the division last week by defeating the Colts right there. They just need one game or Browns lost to the Jets. They took care of that. And we just want to see how failure reminder that was right there to both teams. Because if the Steelers will have lost that game, Browns will have won against the Jets. Today will be a winner take all for the AFC North. And right now, you can definitely hear Mike Tomlin. Definitely very proud of the fact and take a lot of pride uh, in that regard that they're still kings of the North due to the competition they have at their disposal. At the same time, too, I mean, you really look at this team right now, I think, if anything, the only thing that gets a little bit more concerning is when are we going to see the run game start to finally pick up and with a lot more help from offensive line play. Because I was listening to a guy uh, right now, John Clayton, who was uh, talking to uh, someone on Chris, I mean, uh, I think it was Chris Muller on 93.7 The Fan, uh, basically saying that even when it gets colder weather, 
I mean, you can't keep expecting Ben Rosh to keep throwing the ball like he does. You're going to at least have an expectation to try and run the ball, which is very true, I might add. But at the same time, too, this is the bottom line right now. Steelers right there, I really do believe that their season was thrown off track to the first time. Their season was definitely off track with the Ravens well over a month ago, having their Thanksgiving game uh, rescheduled at least over three times. And when you do something like that and just try to prepare for an opponent, I mean, aside from the fact that Fan, I mean, players were vividly upset that they could not play on Thanksgiving, which they were looking forward to doing, which I understand. But I think you look at what it does to them, I mean, in the long run. I mean, yeah, they barely won that game by five points. They're really dominating most of that game defensively, not so much offensively. It's the first time that we saw late in the season where the short pass game was not working for Ben Rosberger. But he got away with one right there. So the following week, playing against the Washington football team right now. And you saw what happened right there. They were able to hand the Steelers their first loss. And pretty much, I mean, a lot of people were wondering, when is this team going to be slapped in the face? Wake-up call and see what they would snap out of it. It's, it I'll tell you what, a three-game losing streak felt like you were on a five-game losing streak for Steelers fans, to be honest with you. It did not feel pretty at all. And the biggest thing I would have been looking at with Mike Tomlin in that regards, and I hate to bring this up, but when you do look in consideration in hindsight, what he's been doing, I mean, ever since the breakup of the Killer Bees back in 2017, I mean, the last time when they were together, which was back, I mean, when you look at it, in 2017, all three of them, the big trio right there, the Killer Bees in the month of December were 18 and 3. And you look at since then, the last two previous seasons, including this year, 6 and 9 in the month of December. I mean, that's the biggest thing I was like more satisfied aside from just holding on to this division. The buy was definitely out the window by that point, but I didn't want to have the narrative being thrown on Mike Tomlin that. Three straight years were 2018. They were seven, two, and one. You go two and four the rest of the way, finish nine, six, and one. And the Ravens win their final game against the Browns, win the division. That was their only ticket into the playoffs for both teams. Ravens edged out the Steelers that year. Then you also look at 2019, eight and five. Yes, that was a gas uh, defense right there. I mean, you had some success at quarterback play with Devin Hodges helping out struggling Mason Rudolph. This Rose, I thought, had a decent amount of games up until that Cleveland game is when you really just start seeing the wheels starting to fall off. But many people would argue last year's game against New York Jets, I mean, in uh, East Rutherford, New Jersey, for those brief few minutes he was in, didn't really get too much of a fair shake to really get a chance to finish out that game. Now, I remember, too, I think uh, – Pouncy got injured in that game. And you have to have a new start. I think it was uh, Hasnauer, I want to say. And pretty much, uh, not only by snap, but fell, I think, on Rudolph right there. And uh, he got hurt right there. And I think he had a shoulder injury, I want to say. But nonetheless, I mean, the Steelers were 8-5 and five a year ago. They had a chance to at least win two out of their three games with help from one of the teams that was trailing them. And I think that would have been the Titans at that time. Instead. They end the season on an ugly three-game losing streak. So that's where that ended. This year, a five-game losing streak to end the season? I don't know how people would have been, like, not, not so much with Tomlin, but the coaching staff. And I think you really have to start wondering how much is it that Tomlin is being too loyal to a fault here with his coaches? Because the thing is, too, I mean, you have quite a few people, including Ben Rosberger, who was uh, defending Randy Feigner this back week. It really felt like the communication was good. I mean, a lot of people look at this offense right now and tend to think that, you know, it's it's just horrific play calling by Feigner, which is probably not so much true because if we really look at it, too, I think just a run game you can make an argument for. But here's the bottom line right here. I mean, when we look at the Steelers' offense, I mean, at this point, 
I mean, with everything going on, I mean, the passing game, Ben Roethlisberger is sixth in the league with touchdown passes at 33, only 10 picks for the year. Best touchdown interception ratio he's had in a long while. And then, not only that, too, I mean, when you look at the pass yards going into this game, he's only 16th, no, the pack, which is not that bad. He's going to finish up for 3,812 yards, I want to say, but still. Then you look at where they're at in the red zone. I mean, they're 11th right there. So definitely some work to go in that regard. But other than that, I definitely do feel like right now, the Steelers at the moment, they got a lot of issues and flaws they could like still iron out here. And I definitely feel like this is going to be a key game uh, right here, going up against the Browns right there. I mean, Mason Rudolph, he's definitely playing for survival right now with the team and beyond. Well, I mean, let's let's not keep any secret behind that. But I will say for right now, I mean, not only are the Steelers trying to play for playoff positioning, he also got a lot of pride going on with this team. So we'll see how that goes right now. I mean, Mike Tomlin, like I said, he doesn't put too much emphasis other on the fact that it's just a good playoff win that they're able to pull this off. And they're just looking at from those standards, nothing more, nothing less than that uh, factor right there. So let's go on and get some other uh, scenarios right now going into this game. Let's take a look at it right now. As we uh, heard going into this game, according to Dale Wiley, Pittsburgh, DK Pittsburgh Sports, on Thursday at 10 a.m. Eastern, the Browns had two more players positive for COVID-19, bringing their total number of players at the time to 12 on the reserve COVID list. A lot of it had to do with the receiving core being on the list. And part of those people from that receiving core uh, that was on there, I mean, who, who was on earlier in the week, was Two starting receivers, Rashard Higgins and Jarvis Landry, and a backup receiver, Kadero Hodge, and then Donovan Peoples-Jones. So two backup receivers, two, two star receivers. All four of those guys were ruled out for last week's game versus the Jets in New Jersey. Then they were also without a will linebacker, Jake Phillips. All those guys I just mentioned, they have been activated for this week's game going up against the Steelers right now. As we look at regards to the Steelers now going into this game, as we looked at Burt Lawton, Burt Lawton, the Steelers director of communications, announced that the following Steelers have been downgraded to out or not making the trip to Cleveland, which includes defense tackle Cam Hayward, center Marquise Pouncey, uh, le left outside linebacker TJ Watt, and also three players are already ruled out, uh, which were marked on the injury report, which was Boswell, Edmonds, and Roethlisberger will not make the trip this weekend to Cleveland. So that's, that's all you need to know right now going into this matchup. And we'll see how today plays out. Because I really feel like right now, I mean, this is more important for Rudolph trying to prove uh, his belonging, if he's going to have a future beyond next season. I think you really do have to measure that under the scope right now. Because Rudolph, or at the same time, for the criticism that he's taken, and he just looked like a guy who was just not mentally ready for the long haul of this game. Aside from just being like the racial accusations that Miles Garrett pitched at this guy, I mean, it's still being reported that he's not going to have any interaction with Garrett during the game. So we'll find out. I want to get your thoughts right now. What do you guys feel about today's uh, game? Do you feel like the Steelers uh, pulled off in Cleveland, or do you think the Browns finally end an 18-year playoff drought. I want to hear from you uh, guys right now. What do you think? I mean, the Browns miss out at 10 and 6 with a Colts uh, win. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that in just a moment here. Also, too, uh, uh, regards to the Steelers, too, some uh, news right now, some bad news, unfortunately. No news no new positives for the Browns, but however, on the Steelers' side, according to NFL senior reporter for ESPN, Jeremy Fowler, he reported at 12.30 p.m. Eastern that Steelers cornerback Joe Hayden has been flagged for a COVID-19 situation, and though not finalized, the Steelers are planning to play without him versus Cleveland per source. In addition to Hayden being placed on the COVID-19 
19 list. Dale Lowry reports that Eric Ebar and the Cassius Parsh have been placed on the COVID-19 list. They have elevated offensive tackle Anthony Coyle, wide receiver Deion Kane, tight end Kevin Raynard, and place kicker Matthew Wright to the active roster. Remember, you got uh, Boswell still doing with a groin uh, injury right now going to this game, so he will be ruled out. He will not be available for today's game, so we'll see how this continues to go right here. Again, if you guys want to follow me on social media, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram. At Proud Rich for the Mass Steel Podcast on Twitter. It is at Mass Steel CGR and at Mass Steel Nation on Instagram uh, for today's uh, game. Also, aside from that, too, uh, here are the other people who are on the injury report. Aside from the guys that are ruled out, you had Deontay Johnson, who did not practice. Uh, he was added on there on Friday due to an illness. And then you also had two. That, that was pretty much it. So we'll see what happens uh, for today's game. I'm personally excited. Definitely a much more relaxed week, knowing that they wrapped up this division, thankfully. I definitely feel like that definitely saved their season. But for right now, I mean, it's just, it's just back to some sort of normalcy right now for this uh, Steelers-Browns game. And when we really look at things right now, I mean, you look at all this stuff that's on the line here. I mean, and this is why, you know, a lot of people who have been questioning this team all year, has this been a phony 11-0 team? I don't think so. I will say, I mean, there was a few games earlier in the year that they show lost prior to the Broncos, their home opener. I probably make the argument against the Tennessee Titans that there was fans. Either way, and then probably the Cowboys was the only other questionable one. I mean, in Dallas right there. Those have been the only alarming things with this team. Other than that, I mean, they've been following ways. Here's the thing y'all look at at the end of the day. Steelers defense has carried this team all year. No doubt about it. I think the thing where we have to start looking in the mirror and realizing is that uh, for right now with it is that offensively, yeah. I mean, they, they, they just have not been playing physical football for a while. The, phys- the lack of physicality has been a question at times, uh, which I will agree to. Because the thing is, I mean, uh, that's more so with your offensive line, not so much the defense. But we'll see what's going on right there. So let's go ahead and take a look at a quick scoreboard update right now. I will not be playing the sound. I want to apologize uh, last week. Uh, and we got the Ravens right now on top of the Bengals right now. They kicked the field goal. It is 3 nothing Ravens with 725 left to go in the first quarter. Bengals got the ball first and 10 at their own 18-yard line. So they're going to be starting deep in their own uh, territory, basically. Uh, for this game. So just give you a little score update right there. Remember, once again, for the Ravens to clinch the playoffs, plain and simple, win and they're in, or they could have a tie plus losses by the Dolphins or Titans or tie plus ties by either the Colts or Browns. And uh, that's the way they get into the playoffs right there. So, like I said, if they, if they don't win, either the Browns or Colts could lose, they will put the Ravens in as well. Also, too, uh, going into this uh, game right now uh, with Randy Feekner uh, talking about Mason Roth, he says he, he saw confidence in him. He didn't have to hear one. He doesn't tell me he's, he is confident. I feel it, said Feekner of Rudolph who will start in place of Roethlisberger this week against the Browns. His communication skills have gotten better in the huddle, in the locker room, and in the, in the individual meetings. Excuse me, folks. Mason has kind of grown up a little bit. And there you have it right there. So let's see. How much is that going to pay off for a guy like Rudolph right now? You definitely got to feel like right now he needs to have this I mean, not just for career Steelers, but just a career in the NFL. He needs to have a confidence team. I mean, I mean, her talk, Bob Pompiani and Charlie Batch talked a couple of weeks ago, previewing the day before the Bengals game on Monday night, 
that just just needed a win for their confidence and just something they could just feel good about. I mean, they had an opportunity to wrap up the division two weeks ago, but so what? Here we are now. And you got the AFC South wrapped up. I mean, AFC North wrapped up, which is great. But here's the thing we got to understand, too, with this team. I mean, going on. I think the best case scenario, so this is where I'm going to get into right now with the Steelers' uh, playoff scenarios. So I think the Steelers, in their best case, they would have to be the number two seed. And and here's scenarios I'm going to read off to you. So let's get into key scenario number one. If the Steelers, Titans, Dolphins, Ravens, and Colts win, what happens is the Tennessee Titans, by winning, they wrap up the AAC South Division. Dolphins being the Bills, uh, they the Bills would drop to the number three seed. Steelers would move to the number two seed. The Ravens winning, they're obviously punched in. And then the Colts winning, they bump out the Browns for the wild card. Remember, they would need a win plus a Browns loss. So what happens is the Steelers become the number two seed. They would host the Indianapolis Colts in the first round. So it'll be two versus seven. Steelers versus Colts. Then you would have the Bills hosting the Ravens, number three versus number six. And the number four Tennessee Titans, the AC South Division champions, versus number five Dolphins. So again, Steelers, Titans, Dolphins, Ravens, and Colts win that make the Steelers number two seed. Their first opponent in the first round of the AFC wildcard playoffs would be versus the Colts. It would be a rematch of week 16. Here's another scenario that could happen. We could also have the Steelers, Dolphins, Ravens, and Colts win, and plus a Titans loss. With the Titans losing and the Colts winning, Colts will claim the AFC South division. And then not only that, you would have, because with the Titans losing, they'd be knocked out of the playoffs uh, right there because they'd be tied with the Browns at 10-6. and six. Browns get the tiebreaker over the Tennessee Titans. They beat the Tennessee Titans in Tennessee, I want to say back in week 14 or 13. So here's how this will play out. Steelers first round opponent then would be the Browns. It would be the, the number two Steelers versus number seven Browns, number three Bills versus number six Ravens, and the number four Colts versus number five Dolphins. Now, I know a lot of people are hesitant. You don't want to face Browns two weeks in a row. But you also got to look at it like this. Should the Steelers win their first round uh, playoff game as a number two seed, you're at least guaranteeing that you're in this playoffs, you're at least be hosting one, maybe two more playoff games. So you're definitely at least guaranteed one more home playoff game, depending what happens to the Chiefs. Does someone knock off the Chiefs? I think those are the two best scenarios. You just, I would say, personally, I'd rather see the Steelers open up with the Colts or the Dolphins. Now, here's how that will work with the Dolphins, in case anyone's wondering. This is what would need to happen for the Steelers to open up for the first Dolphins. Steelers and Colts will win. Colts would need a loss by the Titans, clinch the AFC South. And then other losses that would need to happen would be mean the, the Dolphins losing. Uh, the Titans would own common games over the Dolphins, so they'd be the number five seed. Dolphins would be the number six seed. They'd own the conference record over the Ravens. And since the Ravens sweeping the Browns would drop to the number seven seed. So that would make the Steelers number three seed. They would host the number six Dolphins. Then you would have the number two Bills hosting the number seven Ravens, Bills versus Ravens. And then the Colts would square off against the Titans in the first round in Indianapolis. Okay, so one more time. For Steelers versus Dolphins, in case everyone wants to see the Steelers take on the Dolphins, Steelers and Colts would need the win, plus they would need losses by the Titans, the Dolphins, and the Ravens. Steelers would face the Dolphins. Bills would host the Chiefs. And and then, uh, I mean, Bills would host the Ravens, excuse me, and the Colts would host the Titans. Now, here's another scenario, which could still happen. The Steelers are still the number three seed. Let's say both the Steelers and Titans lose. And on top of that, you have the Colts, Dolphins, and Ravens winning. Uh, so this 
this is what would happen here. You would have the Steelers be the number three seed hosting the number six Ravens. And because, you know, since this, if both the Steelers and the Bills lose or Steelers lose, Bills win, Steelers main the number three seed. So the Steelers' first round poll instead would be the Ravens, number three versus number six. Bills would be the number two seed hosting the number seven Browns. And the Colts would be the number four seed clinching the division because the Titans losing by them winning their game against the Jaguars. They'd host the number five uh, Dolphins. And like I said, with the Titans losing, Browns owe the head-to-head tiebreaker over the Titans by defeating the Titans in Tennessee a couple weeks ago. So that was back in week 14, as a matter of fact. And one more scenario that could happen, let's just say if the Steelers lose and then the Titans, Dolphins, and Ravens win, that would make the Steelers' first-round poets still be versus the Ravens. The Bills would host the Browns and the Titans versus the Dolphins. Okay? Because the, the Titans, by winning right there, at the end of the day, And we'll, we'll find out about that. But, yeah, I mean, that's the scenarios we got being played out right here. Because the, the Titans would be ahead of the Dolphins. They would drop to the wild card. They'd own right now uh, over the Dolphins of their conference record. Then the Dolphins – I mean, so if it was the Titans versus the – Let's see. So that last scenario I was just reading right there. If the if the Steelers lose, Titans, Dolphins, and Ravens win, what happens is, is that the Titans versus Dolphins, and by the Titans uh, winning and the Dolphins winning, what happens there is that the Titans own the, the – I'm a games tiebreaker over the Dolphins. Then you would also have two, the Dolphins versus the Ravens uh, tiebreaker, in case everyone's wondering. The, the, the Dolphins own right there in, in, that, in that respect, the, the, the AFC conference record. And then also, yeah, so pretty much that's how it will be. So if uh, Steelers lose and Titans, Dolphins, Ravens win, Titans would drop to the number five seed. They would own the common games tiebreaker over the Dolphins. Dolphins, by winning, they put themselves in the playoffs. Uh, they be ahead of the Ravens because of their conference record and the Ravens just winning and they're in. So it would still be Steelers versus Ravens. Bills hosting the Browns and Titans versus Dolphins. So those are the scenarios we got being played out uh, for today's uh, contest right here. And we'll see how this uh, continues to reach out. But other than that, uh, exciting day right here. This is stuff. I know it sounds a little windy right here. Just please stay on with me. But I gotta tell you, this is just a better year so far, knowing that the Steelers do not have to be in a position where they had to clinch in week 17. And not only do they have to win, but win and get some help. I got to be honest, Jim, covering this team as a Steeler fan myself, tell me that it does not feel good that you're in week 17, knowing that you're in the playoffs. Not only are you in the playoffs, but you're in the playoffs as a division winner, too, where you at least guaranteed a home game. You don't have to worry about any kind of five-game losing streak. Yeah, you lost the bye, but right now, they are creating their own bye in a way right now going into this week, which I think is really something to be uh, – important to remember here and to be honest you, i really feel like you know what i'm okay with the steelers not getting the buy i'm really i'm really i'm fine with it they need a huge wake-up call going into this i just didn't feel right now that if they would have gotten the buy it would have been much different but i will say once again I, i'm gonna predict uh right now if anyone's wearing my predictions 
uh, for today's uh, contest, I think the most realistic situation that happens is that you have uh, going into this uh, contest, I could see the Steelers knocking off a of Browns today. Titans will hang on to the AFC South. Dolphins are going to probably rest a uh, rest the Bills team unless they really how bad do they want the number two seed so I'll say the Dolphins will beat the Bills Ravens slam dunk give me a win over the Bengals unless Lightning strikes twice in three years where they lose to the Bengals once again so we'll see about that so the realistic situation I'm going to say the Steelers first round opponent is going to be versus the Colts okay because because the Titans winning will clinch the AFC South Dolphins win, they're in, they're ahead of the Ravens because of their uh, conference record. And then you got the Colts getting in by winning the wild card plus with a Browns loss. So I'm going to go Steelers versus Colts, Bills versus Ravens, and Titans versus Dolphins for the first round. That I see is going to be the realistic thing happening. Now, let's get into the keys to the game for today's contest. Key number one. Steelers offensive line, protect Mason Rudolph. Got sacked four times last time in Cleveland, one touchdown, a four interception. If you want to see some good confident Mason Rudolph playing right now, uh, try to show that he belongs in this league. And still as a quarterback, if he has any hopes of being a starter, you have to keep this guy on his feet. Uh, you know Mason Rudolph, every time he snaps that ball, he's going to be anticipating a guy like uh, Garrett come, wanting to come after him and clean his clock. And we'll see about that. So that's uh, key number one right there, despite a lot of rest in this team. Key number two will be the, the Steelers' run defense. Browns are ranked fourth with 2,182 yards on the ground. And there are also six in rushing touchdowns with 22. So that's going to be a, right, a big job right there, trying to defend Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. Also, Steelers' defense needs to play discipline. It's the final key right here. Discipline on defense. They're ranked second and third with 99 penalties for 300 for 961 yards. You have to play discipline football on the defense. I mean, if you're if you're not only get yourself tuned up for the playoffs, despite all the guys they are resting, but still want to get a good quality win. And don't tell me they won't be satisfied keeping the Browns out of the playoffs. So that's gonna be my prediction for this. I hope everybody had a nice conclusion to their Christmas and New Year's, by the way. Let's make this a New Year's resolution. Let's have a deep playoff run and hopefully Lombardi number seven, baby. Mwah. For Charles and Project Richie, once again, you can follow me on social media, on Twitter and Instagram at Project Richie, on Twitter at Mount Steel CGR, and on Instagram at Mount Steel Nations. Always leave it. Don't be trolling. Be rolling. Here we go, Steelers. Here we go. I go. Oh!